strap in for the rest of the story of Jerry and Brenda. So while I'm living with Jerry and Brenda, bad shit happens. I tell my social worker, they don't believe me. A year goes by, I tell my therapist. She, I don't know if she believes me or if she actually took it seriously and my social worker didn't. In retrospect, looking back on it, the only way that he could have gotten away with what he got away with was because he had the help of my social worker. That is the only thing that makes sense. Do I want to believe that about my social worker? No, I don't but I'm not fucking stupid, okay? That's the truth of it. So I leave, I leave Jerry and Brenda's, I go move in with Nancy Robinson, and I remember my social worker, the day that I left, we were in the car, and he says, you ruined that man's life, Shauna. He's gonna go to jail for 10 years because of what you did. Just let that sink in. My social worker said this to me, and I, because this is not my first time at this rodeo, I said, I didn't do anything wrong in the fact that you think I did. That's on you, not me. I didn't do anything wrong. And I won't, I was like, fuck you. That's not gonna work with me, buddy. I was like, I didn't do anything wrong. In the fact that you think I did, that's a problem. And that was it. We never, ever, ever spoke of him again. We never talked about it again. I did have to interact with him because I moved out, but my brother stayed home with him. My brother lived in his home for a year and a half after I left. In spite of everything that DSS knew about him, and I was not the first person that had ever made these allegations, and I was not the last person to make these allegations against him either. I was like one of 13 girls along the way that made this allegation against him. But my brother stayed in his house for a year and a half because I guess they felt like my brother was safe. The main thing was Jerry and Brenda were trying to adopt a baby. They wanted to adopt a baby. And because they were simple, they didn't have a lot of money, They, the only way that they would qualify to adopt a baby was to be a foster child. I mean, to be a foster parent and to take in foster kids. That was the only way it was ever going to happen for them. So we, foster children, we were a, an ends to a mean, we were a means to an end for them. We were the way, we were the route to get them the baby. That's all they ever cared about was getting a fucking baby. So I interacted with him for a year and a half after everything was said and done. And then I moved on with my life and I never saw him again. And I never thought anything more about him, period. And then I was living at my independent living group home. Everything was chill. I was about 18 or 19. And I get a call from that county that I lived in. And they said... Hey, we need you to come in at, to the district attorney. We need you to come in and give us a deposition on what it was like when you lived with Jerry and Brenda. And I was like, oh, what do you want to know about? And they were like, well, some girls have made some allegations that some things have happened to them. And I, I just, you're one of the girls that used to live there. And I just want to talk to you. And I was like, absolutely, totally, no problem. I remember this very fucking distinctly in my brain because I drove with Maisie, the director of my group home, and I had a car accident because I was learning how to drive and I merged too quickly and I merged into an 18 wheeler. And what happened was when I merged in front of him, he hit my back right side and flipped my car all the way around. So then I ended up on this side of him between him and a guardrail. And it took a very long time for him to stop because that's how 18 wheelers work. So that whole time we were stuck and both sides of my car got tore the fuck up. <coughs> and I fucked up Maisie's knee and I felt so fucking bad about it. And I was like, Maisie, go to the doctor. I'll pay for it. And she's like, Shauna, it's okay, baby. But I, I did. She still probably has a limp because of that day. So I very, very distinctly remember that day in my head. Drove to the district attorney, gave a deposition, told him everything that happened. They were like, thank you so much. We're going to prosecute this man. Blah, 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 blah. Think nothing else about it. Go on about my life. Blah, blah, blah. 2008, 2007, I'm living in Florida. We moved back to North Carolina in 2008. And I first thing I do when I move to any new place is I go on familywatchdog.com and I look up all the sexual predators in the area. 
And I was like, I wonder what Jerry looks like. He's registered. He's got to be registered. If he, if they're prosecuted him back in 2000, you know, 2000, he has to be fucking registered still 10 years. So I go on there and there's absolutely no record of him anywhere. Like nowhere. So I was like, that's odd. How can he be a registered sex offender and not on the registry? That's weird. So then the next day I call Henderson. I call the county. <laughs> I call the county and I speak to the district attorney and I say, hey, I'm just curious about this. I, you know, this is the situation. I lived in this foster home and the foster father was brought up on charges and I came and I gave a deposition and my understanding was that he was going to be charged and go to jail for like 10 years and there's no record of him on the registry. So I'm just wondering what's going on. And they go, yeah, there's no record of this at all. He was never charged with anything. There's no record of him ever even being charged with anything to which I go, that's impossible. That can't be possible. There's no way. I, there's no way I know for a fact there's no way because I legit did not want to believe that my social worker had lied to me on that level I did not want to believe it but that is the truth <laughs> he'd never been charged with a crime even though 13 girls came forward and some of us even gave depositions in the county and I don't know why to this day he didn't go to jail but as I have said in my previous videos, white men don't go to jail for shit like this. Okay? So he didn't go to jail. And I was pissed. I was pissed. I was like, fuck this. That's not right. So then I went on this little, you know, crusade where I called Department of Social Services. And I was like, you know, why would you tell me this if this wasn't true? And I don't understand it. And that's when I really started to fight to get my file from DSS because that is something that all social workers tell their, their, their wards, their kids, their wards of the state. Why didn't that placement work out? Why, why did they not want me? What happened? Oh, I can't tell you, but just wait and you'll read it in your file. You can read it in your file. Just wait until you get your file. But then they don't ever let you have your fucking file. They do whatever they can in their power to stop you from ever getting your file. So it's like a fucking cop out for them. So I was like, well, fuck you, social worker name redacted. Uh, I'm going to get my fucking file and I'm going to find out what the fuck really happened here. And it took me from 2008 until about 2016, 2015, 2016. I think I got my file in 2015. It took me that long to get it. And the only way that I actually got it was one of my friends, one of my dear friends who still lives in that town, got a job at Department of Social Services as a janitor and worked at night vacuuming the carpets and while she was vacuuming the carpets she would get me a page she would copy a page or two of my file copy a page or two of my file copy a page or two of my file and it took her about five and a half years no joke my file is about this big it's about this there's many 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 years and many 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 notes and it's all like hard to read because it's like sw spoke to seat social worker spoke to caseworker and I don't know any of that shit. So, like, when I first got it, it was literally, like, reading a foreign language. But I was able to finally piece together some shit that had happened. After, like, using the FBI brain that I have, the Colombo brain that I have, I the only thing I can figure out is this is what fucking happened. Because this is what fucking happened in my mind. Jerry walks away. Don't ask me how or why, but he does. In exchange for that, Jerry who volunteers with the Lions Club and is a big member of the community, uses whatever clout that he has to help social worker become director of Department of Social Services. So social worker used to be social worker, and social worker is now on the board of directors at social services, which is a position that you have to be voted into. So that's what I think happened. Now, here's where it gets really fucking dark, and you're just like, oh my god, like, somebody call Reba McIntyre and have her write a fucking song about this shit, because it's some fucking dark backwoods bullshit. So, apparently, the same year that he's supposed to have been being charged with a crime, 1994, the same year that all of this is supposed to be happening, they managed to adopt a baby. 
in spite of everything else that's going on and 13 girls coming forward and the DA, the district attorney taking depositions from these girls, despite all of that, he was given a baby by the state. The state gave them a baby to adopt a little boy. All I knew about him, and I didn't find out about this little boy until 18 years later, if I had known that they had a child in their custody like that, I would have fought like you would not believe. But I did not know. It was not for me to know. The universe shielded that information from me, probably because it would have broken my heart every year knowing that there was nothing I could do to help him. Now here's where it gets really sad. When I found out about this kid, it was because when he was 18 years old, he killed himself. He shot himself in the head, in their house. And I said, I can only imagine why, why an 18 year old kid would shoot themselves in their parents' home. I can only, like, I know why. I 100% know why. So at that point, I, I can remember that night and I just started crying and going, oh God, no, oh no, oh no, why didn't I know? How did I not know? And my husband's so sweet. My husband was like, honey. How, that's not your fault. I literally was like, I could have stopped him. I should have tried harder. This kid should, this kid would still be alive if I'd tried harder. And then the realization of, I had a kid in 1994 that I gave up for adoption and I gave him up into the custody of the state. Is there a possibility that Jerry might have adopted my son? <clears throat> I have been assured that that is not the case, that there's absolutely no way that that would have happened. But I had a kid in 1994 that I gave up for adoption and I am yet to have ever heard from. I have yet to hear from my son who was well over 18 and should have contacted me by now. And I, in my heart, fear deeply <clears throat> that that is what happened. Am I 100% certain that that is what happened? No. Is there a possibility that my son may still knock on my door? Yes. But there's a little bit too much of a coincidence that I adopted a kid in 1990. I gave a kid up for adoption in the same month of 1994 that they managed to finally find a child to adopt. When this happened, I contacted the police in that county and said, I don't know if you know this or not. But I lived with that man and he did terrible things to me and I know that he did terrible things to other girls that lived with him as well and I'm not sure but I know that 18 year old kids don't shoot themselves in their parents home for no fucking reason like there's a million ways to kill yourself you gonna shoot yourself in the head in your parents bedroom that's a pretty clear message so I was like I would really appreciate if you would investigate this, if you would look into this. I'm not saying that the kid was killed. I'm, I'm not saying he was murdered. I was like, I'm not trying to say that he was murdered. God, that's definitely not what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say he's a murderer, but I definitely would like you to look into why he killed himself. Did he leave a note? No, there was no note found. Well, he killed himself in his parents' bedroom. Possibly there was a note and you just didn't find it. You know, like, are you asking those kind of questions? And the detective, God love him, he certainly tried. He placated me for over a year and well you know every time I bring it up to my boss he tells me that there's no story there and to not even bother and that I should leave it alone and and after a year and a half he finally was like look I'm getting a lot of pushback on this and if I keep pursuing it I might lose my job so I can't to which I said not one bit surprised I'm not one bit surprised I'm not because Somehow, that man has convinced everyone to just look the other way when anything goes bad. And I don't know how and I don't know why. And it's not really my place to know how or why. But as far as karma, that that's his karma. That's his karma. They finally got their baby, but... What kind of life did that kid live for 18 years? I have regret and guilt that I didn't try harder, but the truth is, and people that I talked to along the way, detectives, newspaper, article, like news reporters, like I 
fought so hard. I couldn't have fought any fucking harder than how hard I fought. It just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. Just like with my daughter, even with all the evidence that we had, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. And I don't know why, but that's just the way the judicial system is set up. So I wanted to do this follow-up to my other video because I don't want you guys out there hating Jerry and Brenda and hating the Christmas tree people because they mistreated me. I appreciate that because I would too if I was watching this. I'd be like, fuck that guy. Where does he live? Oh, side note. <sighs> Yes, karma is a good revenge, but don't think that I didn't get my fucking revenge on this man. The entire time that I lived in Asheville from about, mm, let's say, 1998 to 2000, I would drive to that man's house and I would pour milk in his flower basket, like his flower bed. We poured six gallons of milk in that man's flower bed. You know what? His house fucking stunk like spoiled milk for months. We would put fucking rats and dead animals in his mailbox. Oh, yeah. I did so many, like, fuck yous, fuck yous, fuck yous. You don't have to worry about that. I dealt with my fucking karma with that man and my anger with him, and killing his plants was enough for me. <laughs> like, I don't need any more than that. But I do want you to know that there was more to that story, and that was the end of the story. The story for me ended when the detective said, I can't pursue this anymore because I might get fired. Because at that point I realized, like, where am I going to go above a detective in that county? Like, there's nowhere else to go. Like, I'm not, the chief of police, the chief of police, who probably also volunteers at the Lions Club and is probably really good friends with this guy. What's the point? What's the point? I have a family. I have kids of my own. I have to focus my energy on this shit. Do I wish things went differently? Yes. Am I still fearful that the baby that they adopted that killed himself when he was 18 is actually my child? Yes. Like, I'll be sitting at a red light and that thought will cross my mind. What if you never meet Robert because Jerry and Brenda got to him first? And if that's the truth, again, Reba, write a song about it. Because that is some fucking dark shit. If my social worker knew that this man had messed with me and let it happen and then chose to then give this man my baby, because that's some shit I could see happening. I could absolutely, now as I look back and I see how like fucked up my social worker actually was and how... The story with Nancy Robinson, where I wanted to go home with Nancy Robinson, and the state was like, we recommend that he she go home with the mother. The reason for that was because my mother had, like, bribed my social worker. So my social worker wasn't in my best interest. My social worker was working at my mom's best interest, but I didn't know it at the time. How the fuck are you going to know? How the fuck are at 14 are you supposed to understand that this man who's been appointed by the state to protect you is actually not protecting you and lining his fucking pockets by throwing you under the fucking bus at every fucking turn? How would that even occur to you that that was a possibility? But guess what? That is what was fucking happening. And that is why they fought so hard for me not to get my file because it's abundantly clear. Like, it's so obvious. Tuesday afternoon... Caseworker and independent living group home call social worker and say, we know Shauna has court on Thursday. We strongly recommend that Shauna stay in the custody of Nancy Robinson. Then the next day, social worker visits with mom. Then the next day in court, social worker stands up and says it's in the best interest of the child to be returned to the mother. Even though both the therapist and the group home and the foster mom all recommended three days before that strongly recommend he still chose to let me go back to my mama. Why? Why? Why would he? There, you can look at the file and see there's absolutely no reason, no logic behind it other than something happened on that day when he met with my mom. Why would he go have met with my mom? Why? He met with her at our house, not her coming to him at the office. He would meet with her at our house alone. Why? Because she was obviously bribing him in some way. Again, 
I want to be very clear. All of this is speculation. All of this is my perception, my reality, my interpretation of my facts. Is this all 100% true? Like, I'm not a million little fibers over here, bitches. I'm not 100% that all of this is true. And I really wish that I could tell you the truth. I really wish that I could say this is 100% what happened. But I honestly don't know what happened. I know that these are the facts. I have laid the facts out before you. I have laid out the most logical conclusion to why they are the way that they are. But is it true? I don't know. Am I making it up? No, absolutely not. All of this is fucking true. I can show it to you in my file. Is it sad? Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And like, I was 25 before I got my file and I actually sat down and I started to realize like I had always thought that my social worker had my best interest at heart, that my social worker was always looking out for my best interest, that I may not understand what the decisions were being made for me were, but that I had to just trust that my social worker had my best interest at heart. And it was really hard for me. And my husband will tell you, it broke me for a long time to realize that I was nothing to that man but a fucking paycheck. He saw me and my brother and my mom and saw a situation where he could make money. And that is fucked up. Period. Like, there is no way I can fucking sugarcoat that to make it anything other than what it fucking is. And that was, he was a fucking predator. Just like all the other predators. He was no different than any of the other predators in my life. Some of them preyed on me for one reason, and some of them preyed on me for another. But when I look back on him, I look back on him just like I look back on Jerry. He was a predator. He took advantage of me. He used me. He threw me aside and threw me under the bus and sold me out in a fucking heartbeat. And for that, I hope karma visits him. That's all I'll say on that. That's all I'll say on that.